Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the house. So today's a big day. We are going to get energized here. It's time to do something that I might know a little bit about. We're going to get power to the house. We've been running on an extension cord here from across the driveway. You know, I got a 15 amp wire on a 30 amp breaker running across the driveway getting crushed every day. Um, and it's time to get the power in here. And the days are getting super short. So we've got some street lights that we're going to hang in each corner to light this place up so I can work at night. And we're going to install the panel. So let me show you what we've got going on here. And we're going to get power in the house. We've got a 200 amp panel put in here. We're going to pull some cable across the street, some wire. So friends coming over later to help me with that. The chickens are, you know, saying good morning also. Bear, you going to say hi? No. Better just gonna stand there. So let's get busy. I'll show you what we got going on and how we're gonna install this 200 amp panel in our new home here. It's in the garage. So let me bring you in. So I've already heated these pipes up a little bit. You can kind of see a little toast at, toasty action there. Had to heat them up with a heat gun to get them kind of lined up so that they'll fit into the panel board. And they have a little bit of flexibility, but, but not a lot. So I'll show you that after. The small ones are super easy, of course. This is the main feed going in. This is a half inch conduit that runs all the way, way over to the island over there for an outlet in the island. And then I've got a three quarter for the sewage pump because my septic tank is higher than the outlet of the house. And then this one goes across the garage for a future hot tub that we plan on putting in the back of the house. And I ran a two inch out to the driveway that's stubbed up. And then another one that goes underneath and is stubbed up on the other side of the driveway for future lights going down the driveway. And that white one there is just a, a pipe going in and out for a sleeve for, you know, if we do like some irrigation, we can slide that wire through there. It's merely a sleeve. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set the panel on top of here, take a Sharpie, mark out all of the conduits, and then we're going to punch the conduits out in the right spot, put the male adapters on all of these critters, and then we'll set the panel and install it. Then the next step after that, we got to suck some lines in and I'll show you how to do that too. Let's get, uh, let's get knocking these holes out here. Okay, so you're looking from underneath. We're just going to set this panel right here where we want it. And then we're going to line those pipes up and hopefully we can get enough flexibility out of them to get them where we need them to be. So right now the three inch isn't looking good. So I don't think I got enough oomph to pull that forward. So I might have to do some more heating on this one. Yeah, to get that out more. So that's going to be fun. I got to heat this up more to get this out. And then these obviously are no problem. So what I'm going to do for now is just slide this back to where they need to be because that's where they got to be. That one's going to come out like that. And we're going to just mark these with a Sharpie and then we'll punch them out. This happy little guy, of course, is right in the middle of a little one. So that's going to be, that's going to be troublesome. I'm not sure if we're going to be successful at that. We might need a blunder plug for that one. See, this one, we got enough flexibility. It's just not that three inch. The three inch is a little much. You know, it's got some beefaroni to it. And that guy, we got to see these, these you put anywhere. So we're going to maybe do something like this, probably. Knock this one out to three quarter and then use this guy. So that's the plan. Okay, let's get to heating this thing up. It's going to take us a while. All right, for a job like this, you just kind of got to get yourself comfortable. Pay attention to what you're doing. You know, watch something good on your idiot box. Just keep heating this up because doing it this way is going to take a little while. It's not the ideal way. The ideal way is a heating blanket, wrap around this, make it a lot easier. But this is what we got. We're just going to take the time and just sit here and heat this thing up. So I'll see you in about a half an hour. And looking good. Looking good in the hood. All right, folks, I think we got it heated up enough. It's going to hold it here in place. Kind of got it flush with this two by six because we're going to be proud a half an inch for the drywall. So we kind of want this just behind the drywall. Just enough room for that male adapter. Then it's got to hold it here, let it cool. And we'll go move on to knocking out this panel board and see if we can make it fit. Yeah, trim this critter down a little bit. All right, we're going to do a little trimolina and we'll go knock out that box. Just a slight trimmage. Swing. There we go. Beautiful. Then we go grab some glue. We'll glue this bad dog on here and then make sure we got the others nice and nice and even. So this is what we have on the bottom of the panel. So this was kind of the, you know, the crayon marks that I put on when it was up there. So you can see this three inch pipe, like it barely fits inside the panel. Really, I probably should have reduced that down to 
maybe two and a half, but we'll make it work. That lock nut might just be a little bit of a bear, you know, getting it spun in there. So when we punch this, we got to punch this basically dead nuts center. And then we got a two inch pipe here. So we'll just knock this knockout out, punch it out a little bit bigger, and we can line the two inch punch to boop, pop a hole there. This one's going to be the tricky one. That needs to be a half inch. And this eccentric knockout only allows us for a, a one inch pipe there. So we got to knock out that center one without blowing it out. This we just got to punch the three quarter and we've got a half inch knockout here that we can use right there. And then we'll probably just use like this one for the ground wire going out to the ground rod. All right, let's get these drilled, punched, all that good jazz. So you know some of the most important tools for doing this, just a pair of dikes, diagonal cutters. We'll knock out this. That one's just going to be a three quarter. So that one's super easy. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle that out. This one here, half inch again, beater screwdriver. Just kind of gently twist and turn. And be careful you don't take any plugs out that you don't want. Sometimes that's not, you know, it's easier said than done. So what a lot of times you do is you take your cutters here and snip. So this first knockout is half inch. Shazam. We got rid of that. I got a trash bag way over there. Hey, two points. And then this is the three quarter inch hole. So we want to get that one out. Cut that in half, grab it from the other side. All right, so that one's three quarter. We gotta knock this one out to three quarter. And at the same time, we'll just punch this guy out and use that as our start for this two inch pipe. Boom, we got a one inch hole. What are you talking about here? So we want our two inch back here and we're way up front. So we're gonna punch another hole back here just so we can center that two inch punch in here. Hopefully it's enough, otherwise we'll punch it again. All right, we got our happy two inch punch. Okay. Now we got a nice two inch hole right where we need to be. Let's move over to this baby. See if we can punch it. Here we go. Ta-da! Now we got a three inch hole. We are good. We got a big kahuna hole and that's where we'll pull our feeders through. Now the next trick is to do this, get this a three quarter without blowing out the knockout. So that's gonna be the, the next trick. Ah! All right, that's good. And then you gotta make sure you vacuum out the panel after you get those shavings out. So we're gonna do the old Manuel way. And hopefully we don't twist out that center piece. And now we're gonna see if this thing will fit. I hope I didn't screw it up. Come on, baby. Be good. Oh, be good. I don't wanna to have to use a blunder plug. We'll reduce some washers. I think we got it. Yes, we dooted it without destroying it. Look at that, that's the thing of beauty. Those are nice holes, aren't they? Beautiful. They are. Let's get this baby installed. So let's see if we can make this thing fit. The three inches, the three inches slightly off, but I think we can work that in, maybe. They should, in theory, poke through. We're almost there. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta talk extra nice to it, you know? And then it'll kinda do what you want it to do. So let's get the lock nuts on here. We'll get these straightened up and then we'll screw this baby into place. Hopefully I can get that three inch lock nut in there. There's not much room for spinach. Let's see if we can get this lock nut to work. It's kind of a fat lock nut, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this work or not here. Houston, we have a problem. They make skinny lock nuts and they make fat lock nuts. And I've got a fat lock nut. Half an incher. So we gotta make a mouse to suck through the pipe. So we're gonna suck this through. 
perfect. We'll put a pulley up here and we'll just watch it. We don't put too much strain on that high quality um, southern yellow pine. How big is the mouth going to be? Three inches. No eyes or anything. Just a bag like a parachute. We also call them a parachute. Say that's it. Well, I down. So go through there. You guys call them a rat. So we're going to stretch these legs all out. We got two hots and a snootral. And we got the neighbor's dog saying hi. Hi, guys. And identify the neutral. The other two, they don't matter. It's just single phase. You got the big tough one right there. All right, you ready to suck that through? Yeah. Okay. We're going to man the vacuum and we'll suck this right through. So now what we got to do is Tommy's out there with the bag. And we're just going to suck that through with the old vacuum machine right here. Hopefully it goes zoom. A little noise. We'll try to seal this up the best we can with the old mittens. Boop. Shazam! We got a string. Just like that. See how easy that was? Now we're just going to tie this to the rope and pull the rope through. Here's the rope. I was looking for the rope. Oftentimes it's like be awesome to have three arms. Yep. There we go. That should be more better. You always put it on the ladder that you're using to make sure you have the perfect tripping hazard. That's what you're supposed to do. Now we'll pull this big rope in, go to the other side and make a head. All right, I'll head to the other side. Okay. That's going to be full of There we go. Because we'll take like a handful of strands to the outside, bend them over, and then cut off the middle. It's always important to make a nice head. Who wants to do what part? I can go pull. I'm going to go sit in the truck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pull it here? I'll pull from inside? That's fine. Okay. All right. We'll see if I've got the muscles to pull this in. All right. Let's pull see. Muscles. See what we got. Come on. Go ahead. but not bad considering this is so strong. that's what it is like Holy macaroni and cheese. Look at the L. There it is. That's all we need. Job is done. Good. So Tommy and Wesley are gonna tie this baby in. So what we gotta do, this is a feed through. Breaker's off right now. So we're gonna hit these main lugs. Let's do a loop-de-loop, -loop, hit the neutral, ground. And then the two hots will go boom, boom. And then once we turn this breaker on, we'll have power over in the house. So super easy grounds. And then we'll be putting two ground rods at the house over there. Cause that's like technically a sub panel. Let's get over there. We got to, you know, finish our surgery on the lock nut. Custom lock nut. Let me grind this other side a little. Okay. Now we just gotta dump this in the snow to cool it off a little bit. Where are you finding that? I had a cup of snow over here. 
Let me slice this free. You can see I got the reinforcements here to help me. Some more muscle. I'll just cut this head free. So it'll make a good head. I mean, this was a short pull, but if you got a long pull, you got to make sure you have a good head. That thing pulls apart halfway through a 400 foot long pull. It's a bad day. Let me put the bushing on. That wire about got away from me. It did. Thing of beauty, ready to terminate. It's just super easy to hook this panel up. Got our neutrals, we'll be here. And this is a built in neutral bar. So when you plug in the arc fault, ground fault breakers, it goes right in there. And then we'll hook our ground up, up to these ground bars. And this is a bonding screw for if this was the first point of disconnect, it's not. So that screw is gonna go bye-bye. So that our neutrals and our grounds are all isolated. That's super important. And then we'll have another, we've got another piece of ground wire out of here going out and outside to two ground rods that we gotta go get later because I didn't get them yet. Oh, whoa. Everybody home? Tuck that in nice. We'll cut that right there. This one I can do with my linemans. Another thing too, you always want to make sure you cut towards you so you hurt yourself. But you want to pencil the wire down so you don't hit the copper. It's a bad practice, like to do the ring, and then you hit the little strands of copper. That's no bueno. A bonding screw goes bye bye. That goes in the twash. We got a lot of stuff down here. Let's do a little cleanup on aisle five. This is our neutral. Neutral, neutral. You gotta make sure you gotta do this to the proper foot pounds. Here you go, grab this. Pulley. We got a pulley. There is a foot pound value that you're supposed to torque this to. So I torque it to, I torque it to tight. All right, grab a couple zip ties. Remember always to twist off your tie wraps. Almost ready for juice, Newton. I love juice, Newton. Boom, it's energized. Oh, I heard it. We got power. All right, Wesley, let's see what we did here. Let's see what we got, we got juice. Do we have juice, Newton? Yeah, 277, just like yours. Perfect. <laughs> Always wanted a 480 system in the house. <laughs> we are Gouda, Gouda to go. All right, now we just gotta finish tightening up the odds and ends, we'll be all set. All right, guys, thanks to Wesley and Tommy. Come over, muscles, brains. We're, we got power in the house, so now we got to get some temporary lights and some plugs, and we'll be 
Silence. I can work at night. Perfect. What do we got to do next? I guess I got to go to the Home Depot. Yeah. I think that's what I got to do next. So that was a whirlwind. Thank goodness I had my friends come and help me pull that wire in because there's no way Karina and I would have pulled that big feeder in. That critter was heavy. A lot of weight there. So we just ran to Lowe's and we got a roll of gold, I mean 12-2 uh, Romex. And grab that. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw a couple of circuits in here so we have some temp power while we're working. So I'm just going to put two receptacles on the wall over here and we'll just run a couple of couple of lines over. That way we can work and then after that we got to get these lights up. So let's do a little Romex jockey in here. You know there's a lot of debate on the right way. I've got a whirly gigger out in the back for this but for something so short what I like to do is just peel off what you need, you know, a good estimation, and then just walk it out because you, you cannot, it's unacceptable to have Romex full of kinkaronis in it. So this panel's hot, the breaker, the main breaker's off, so, but those two critters hiding behind there, there's electricity waiting to get us. So we're just going to stay away from that, sling a couple pieces of Romex over, we'll nail a box as up. So this being a garage, we'll do, we'll just do two of them at four feet to the top. Nice, easy number. One on each side of the bay. That'll work just fine. So I grabbed these super high quality ones from Lowe's. It'll work. It's not what I like to use, but it's what they had. We're not going to use these plastic boxes when we do the house. We'll use the fiberglass. Critters. I like those better. I've literally wired hundreds of houses. And that is my preferred box. So if you're doing this, they make these little strippers that are strictly for Romex. It's got a 14-2 and a 12-2 spot and then stripper spots for 12 and 14. It make the work, you know, super easy. You simply just cut it, pull, done. Take the paper off. And you gotta have six inches of free conductor in the box. Staple within six inches of the box. You're good to go. Do a nice job, keep your wires flat. Now we'll put a receptacle in there. We'll measure enough of this. We're just gonna kind of float this in because we're gonna have like a bazillion wires in the future coming in here. So what I'll do is I'll put a block across the back and all these conductors will be like neatly strung on that. So we're just gonna do that. We'll strip this here, come down there. That's plenty. Shazam. Just like that. We'll bring this guy right along with this one. A nice easy bend, easy like Sunday morning bend. See, that's the three quarter. We don't want that one to leave. But this big beefy one in the middle, so I'm gonna try to gingerly twist the roni it out. Twist the roni, twist the roni. There we go, we got it. Pull it back here. Now we can put our connector in. Oh, look at that. She brought me some macaroni salad. How awesome is she? <laughs> the world's best macaroni salad with tuna in it. I haven't had it. You're missing out. Thanks for lunch. Well, that was super yummy. If you haven't had that before, you're really going to try it. Macaroni salad with tuna mixed in it. So I would still like to use these old school steel connectors. Maybe because I'm old. So in case you're wondering what we used for conductors here, we got two watt copper. If this was aluminum, you could use 4 rot because this is residential, so there's an exception to the code where you can basically step it down a size. If this was a commercial project, you'd have to have 3 rot copper and 250 MCM aluminum for 200 amp. But I spent the fortune and did the copper just because it's my house, and even though it's aluminum, I'm sure it would be just fine. I know it would be fine, but I don't know. It's a mental thing for me, and I just wanted copper in my house because it's my house, and I don't ever plan on leaving. So we got... Our couple of circuits here. We'll get these tied in. 
And be careful because this is hot. I mean, I could shut it off outside, but I don't feel it's really necessary. These are all shielded really well. You just want to snug it up. You don't want to kill it. Always take the grounds, terminate them first. And it's important to keep your pairs together and I'm going to show you why here real quick. And I'll show you a couple features of this panel that I really like, this nice Siemens panel. These little closures are nice, it keeps that nice and safe. You got separate ground bars pre-installed, you don't have to buy them extra. Neutral bars installed. But the best feature of these new panels is it has this integral neutral bar alongside your, your hot bars and the breakers. So you've got your stab for your power. So when you plug this in, the power, which is the center bus bar, and then it also has a little grabby that'll grab the neutral bar. So if you've done this in the past, you've always had the little white tails and then the panel board ends up a mess because you got all these white tails that have to go to the neutral bar and then you bring your neutral to the breaker because you've got to have Basically everything in a house this day, these days has to be arc fault protected. Pretty much across the board, everything's arc fault protected. They make these arc fault GFI combination breakers, which is a lifesaver. One breaker, arc fault breaker, GFI breaker, all in one. All protected right here at the source. Nice and easy, you don't have GFIs around, kicking around. So these arc fault GFI combinations are really sweet. And it makes a nice clean job when you're done you know, tightening the panel up. And they just plug right in. So you just kind of grab it right on, the little hook, it'll fall right into place, and then latch it in. Just a little snap, and then hook, right? The hook, snap, push, boom. Now we've got two 20 amp arc fault, ground fault combination breakers. And you gotta make sure you keep your neutrals and, and hots, the pairs together. Because if you crisscross, double cross them, it's just gonna trip the breaker all the time. And then the, bre the breaker too, We'll have a little, has a little sticker on it. Let me bring you in closer. So if you notice, can you see that? That little sticker has an N with an arrow pointing to the top N. So your white wire, your neutral wire is gonna go here, here, and then your hot will go in that other screw. So you don't wanna crisscross that either or it won't work. You see, arc fault, ground fault combination. Beautiful thing. And make sure you get one of these square tip screwdrivers. It's awesome, worth its weight in gold. Okay, we're going to tug, tug, tug test. We're good to go. Beautiful. Now we are off to receptacles. We got to throw these receptacles in real quick here. So these are super easy to install. The receptacle super easy. Just make sure you keep your six inches of conductor. Strip these. And then the strippers have the happy little holes in them. And those holes are for making loops. See, nice little happy loops. That's all. What I like to do, remember black goes to the gold side, the little skinny one there in the skinny slot. And you always want to make sure you hook them clockwise. So it's imperative you get that clockwise action going because that sucks the end of the tail under the screw. If you go the other way, it push the It'll push the conductor out instead of sucking it under the screw. So that's all, see, super easy. See that? Straight up and down, no break. Okay, it's a thing of beauty. We got our power all in, that's nice, nice. We've got two receptacles. Now the next thing is, we've got these two street lights here that we gotta mount. We're gonna put one Right up there, hanging from that truss, kind of shining that way. And then we're going to hang another one down that end of the house, shining towards us here this way. So we got to get Earl, Fred, out of here. Probably Karina's truck too, because our car, because I'll need the room for the outriggers on the lift to get the lift up here. We got to string a wire from up there, kind of down, bring it over, do 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 do, and temporarily hook it up in the panel. So I've got that roll of cable which is shorter for this side. And then I got this big long roll of cable. We'll string up temporary to get way over yonder for a light over there. So I'm gonna move the trucks and we will catch up with you. In a minute, we'll start stringing some wire. Let me get the lifts and it's gonna take a little bit. We got some shuffling to do.
All right, well, we got Tommy's lift in here. Ran that cable over, just saw me get that up. We'll see if we can get that woven up there and try to hang this light from the truss up there. I'm not sure, but I'm trying to find the right place for this microphone. It looks kind of silly, but it keeps folding up in my shirt, so I'm not sure what to do. But let's climb up here. Hopefully this lift will reach up and extend enough to get out there. I'm kind of pushing it. I'm not sure if I'm going to reach it or not, but let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna give it the old college try, as they say. Whatever that is. What the heck's a college try? Try your hardest? All right, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, hopefully this thing will stretch out enough. Okay, I'll probably need your help. I think I can get it. There, that holds it on our angle of the dangle. Wire this up. And these, of course, will only be on when we're in here. Yeah. At night. Right. There. It's exactly what I was envisioning. So we'll suck this in, pull the truck ahead, and we'll do the one on the other side. And tonight we'll see what we have for, for light in here. That's what you call working like a gentleman right there. Ooh, like on a scissor lift. There, I think that'll work. I think so. You look okay from there. There we go. That's good. I'm thinking this should give us some spectacular temporary lighting. What do you think, guys? I think it's beautiful. We just got to tie it in the panel. And I think we're going to have some like pretty awesome temporary lights in here. Guys, we got it done. It's all finished. You'll see some other stuff behind us too, but we finished the electric, got the wires all in, the lights in, a couple of receptacles. Still have the ground to do. I got that wire here. I'll strip it, tape it green, two ground rods. I pounded one today, but it was like 897,000 degrees. The ground's like concrete, so I got one in. I'm gonna do the other one like in the evening or something, but I have a little more energy to drive a 10-foot ground rod in the ground. So that's the only thing we have left, to get that ground rod in. It's grounded back to the main panel, so it's fine. But we're good with that. Tonight when we get home, we're going over to a friend's house now, but when we get home, We'll turn these lights on and poof, this way here you can see what we've got going on. But if you look around, we've got, we've got windows in this place. So I was kind of under the gun. I didn't tape any of the installation. I'll show you some more of the installation, but some of these were a bear. This window here, all of these double windows, they came as a two-piece unit. And you had to put this big aluminum bar, basically. I, so what I did is I put the first window in, put this aluminum bar in, and it locks the two windows. And then there's another piece on the outside that basically just sandwiches it. Self-tappers in there. Boom, boom, we got it in. Secured it the rest of the way, and they're in. So I'm thinking that's to keep our, the, you know, the, the, the pressure rating so the wind doesn't blow out if we get, you know, like a hurricane wind. And these windows are hurricane rated impact glass. I think one of these single windows here, like this guy, I'm thinking this one here has got to weigh, because I was picking them up. I don't know, what do you think, 150 pounds? Anyway? I don't know, I didn't pick them up. <laughs> well, you were the he man. <laughs> they were heavy. Like, they are the heaviest window. I've put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of windows in, and I have never ever put a window in as heavy as this thing. Golly. But we got them in. Friend came over. My buddy helped me like get these last, these, you know, these double units lined up in it because it was a little bit of a trick. But, but they're in. So let me just go, let's go outside and show you in the back. We haven't quite finished the install in the back. And we'll show you some of the windows in the back and how we're, uh, you know, we're tacking this window install. But Man, it looks awesome. 
All these windows. Windows. Starting to look like a house. This is like the ultimate open floor plan, right? <laughs> right. A 3,600 square foot open floor plan. So next, next weekend, we're going to get these doors in. And we're working on a video for building the back patio and front porches. So that's another video that we're going to do a whole other separate one. But I'll show you. Again, we've got some anchors in the ground and a little preview. So this is the window. So what I like to do on a window installations is I like to use these cabinet screws with like a washer head and then I do every other one. Let me know if I'm supposed to do every one because, hey Rooster, so every one I've ever done, I've always done every other one and I've never had a problem. So I got to finish taping the back side. We did the front and the side, but this back we still need to do. So what I like to do is slice the house wrap tuck the window up underneath the house wrap so any water comes down will go over the window and shed down and then I put the they call it window tape here in north we used to always call it Vicor but it's a tar tape kind of put a strip on the bottom the two strips strips on the side and then another strip up top to completely seal that window so you're not getting any moisture whatsoever it doesn't have a chance to get in that window so that's what we're doing I did the Tyvek tape to there, ran out, and we just ran out of time this weekend. We did a lot of work, I think, this weekend. That's a lot of windows. It's a lot of windows. All the way around, got these all in and plumbed up, and I should bring a level to show you. You gotta make sure they're on. But you can see the side here all, these are all taped up. That's how the finished product looks. So fully taped, fully sealed. Don't ever have to worry about any moisture getting in there at all. And Come on front and we'll check out the front real quick. It's pretty awesome. We got some other construction going on here. We got some porchage. Porchage, porchage. I'll go into more detail on the porches in the next video but there they are man does it look awesome from out front here super super cool starting to really 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 look like a house once we get this up so we gotta this roof is gonna go right underneath that front fascia board so this these roof rafters will go right up tucked right up against that fascia and there'll just be basically a piece of flashing off of that onto the roof of the of the of the porch and I did some extra overhangs so this overhang is going to basically come to the over those side windows a little bit because I wanted to shelter that porch as much as possible but that we'll go into more detail when we do the porches but that's it you can see all the tape these guys are all sealed up ready to rock and roll some giant windows so we can have as much light in the house as possible so we don't end up like living in a cave. So all right guys, so we'll see you in a second later tonight after it gets dark and we'll try those lights and show you how awesome this place is lit up with those two street lights. That's the way that Karina can keep working at night. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. Yep, exactly. Actually, I was going to sit on the porch and have wine. <laughs> oh, nice. That's even better. <laughs> it's supervised, right? Yes. Yes, nice. All right, guys, we'll see you in a sec. One, two, three. Shazam! Let there be light. Look at this. It's like daylight in here. Isn't it awesome? We got like a full-on, ready to rock and roll. Boom. Street light, way down yonder, street light. So, no excuse for not working at night now. Tired doesn't cut it. So we got plenty of work to do inside here. The next thing, we gotta start framing out the interiors here at night when we can't do any of the outside work. So that's what we're gonna keep plugging on. Start framing some interior walls in the evening when we can't work because really, daylight is the only time I have is the weekends, maybe an hour or so at night. And it's dark already. Winter stinks, but 
At least it'll be manageable, but at night we'll keep trugging along in here. So we'll keep you updated. Thanks for watching, y'all. This is our barn dominium house that's not going to look like it from the outside, but from the inside. It's going to be super, super cool. So follow along for the build. We'll keep you updated as much as possible. Next video on the house is going to be the porches. So we'll be building the front porch and the back patio. So appreciate y'all for watching. It means the world to us. We really, really appreciate it. And just remember, do something today to make somebody smile. Because you never know, it'll change the world. Appreciate you guys. Look at this. How cool is this? Say hi to Earl. Earl is very low. Okay, guys, we'll see you later. Bye. Man, this is awesome. I love having lights.